Hello, I'm Chrissy, and today we're going on a book first date. <laughs> first date. That was okay, but I was sweating profusely and I don't remember anything I said because I just didn't stop talking because of fear of awkward silence. That's usually how first dates go. The first category we've got in the tag today is the awkward first date. <laughs> this is a book where something felt off. Like it wasn't bad, but there was no spark. Now in my experience, all first dates have an awkward quality and it's hard to feel a spark when you're just really nervous and anxious and uncomfortable. So I would say if you have an awkward first date, maybe if it's not extremely awkward, you should give it another go. And then if the second date goes a little better, then maybe try a third date. A book where something felt off, it wasn't bad, but it just didn't have that spark for me. I Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella. I enjoyed this book. But it didn't have that same spark that the other Sophie Kinsella book that I've read before, Finding Audrey, had for me. It was like nice, it was almost there, but it felt a little drawn out and lacking in that chemistry punch that I was looking for. Another one I put in this category is uh, The Lost Hero. This I wanted, I wanted, it was good. It, there was just something awkward the whole time. Something felt off. Oh, uh, what was it again? Percy wasn't there. The next category we have here is the cheap first date. <laughs> I can't blame a first date for being cheap. Usually you're going to a coffee place. Usually first dates are cheap. You don't want to spend a lot of money on this person. You don't even know if you're going to like. So I don't know what you're saying with the cheap first date. A book that you turned out to be less than you expected. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's less than you expected. I'm going to have to go with A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. Like I enjoyed this first date. Like it really did. It just wasn't as much as I expected. I was given unbelievably high expectations by Akamath. You know, it was like that thing happened and I was just like that thing and then other things and then the, the cons fall out from that thing and I was like, but this thing and that thing and this thing. For full details, check out my book talk. <laughs> the next category we have today is the well-prepared first date. Better than expected. The Martian by Andy Weir. I didn't know what to expect from this book. I knew there was a movie coming and I knew that people had said it was good. And then it was so much better than expected and I didn't want to put it down and I wish there was like a Martian too. Can we just drop him on Mars one more time? Maybe he just is on Earth and then everyone leaves him on Earth. Maybe he's with another person in the Martian too so there's two people to take care of and somehow they we get stuck somewhere. I don't know. I would read it. Category four is hot but dumb. A book that's pretty on the outside but not so good on the inside. <laughs> this sounds really mean. I can't just grab a book and say that this is pretty but dumb. I'm gonna change this one to a date you really wanted to go on but ended up standing them up because you were really busy and that's terrible. I've never done that IRL, but I've done it with some books and the book I still feel shit about. I still have to get back to like, I have to reschedule a new date because I need to read this. I can't believe I, I literally like can't comprehend that I haven't read this book. And that is Life and Death by Stephanie Meyer. I stood this book up so hard. I was so excited for our date, like so excited. And then I got caught up in all this moving nonsense that lasted forever and I never read it. I hate that. How could Stephanie Meyer have a Twilight book that I haven't read? It's so sad and I'm so sorry. Someday we will date. Category 5 is The Blind Day, which translates as a book you picked up without knowing anything about it. I actually have two for this one. The Hunger Games. I knew nothing, absolutely nothing when I picked this up in 2008. All I knew was Stephanie Meyer said it was great. So I just ordered it and read it and it was amazing. It sounds crazy now because this is a huge title, but back then nobody knew about The Hunger Games except for, you know, the book people who picked it up off the shelf when it first came out and saw Stephanie Meyer recommended and picked it up. Good times. And the other book was The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken back in 2012. My friend Liz 
used to do these videos where she talked about the new YA releases that were coming out every week. I saw her pick up The Darkest Minds and I paused it because I thought the cover and the title were so cool. I didn't want to hear her synopsis. I was just like, I'm getting that and I'm reading it. And I did and it was the best. Look at her now. She's becoming a movie. Next category we have is speed dating. <laughs> people always speed date in movies, but I've never seen people speed date IRL. It just looks fun in a funny way. I don't think I could take myself seriously speed dating. I think it would be hilarious. If any of you have ever speed dated, let me know. The latest book that I remember reading super fast was Dear Martin by Nick Stone. I read this in like three hours. It's not very long, so you could probably read it in three hours too. It was so good, so well written, so important. <laughs> Next category we got here is The Rebound, which is a book you read too soon after finishing another book and you weren't through your book hangover, so it kind of ruined that book for you because you weren't ready to read it. The only book I can think of is the one that I read in my Clockwork Princess hangover, which I don't even remember the name of, but it was like all these boy experiments. It was neon green. I did a book talk for it. Yeah, nowadays if I'm not ready to read a book, I will not pick up another book. I take my time before going into the next one because that's the right thing to do. No one wants to be a rebound and no one should be a rebound. Unless you do want to be a rebound, in which case, I guess, be a rebound. Next category we have is the over-enthusiastic date. <laughs> A book that is trying too hard. And now again, I think we need to consider that this is the first date. When people are trying really hard, like, can you blame them? The only book that I can think of that fits this category, and I hate to say this because I really enjoyed this book, but I just think it was trying a little hard and that is an upside of unrequited. I'm Becky Ambertoli and I really liked this book, but there was just that feeling sometimes in the back of my head I would get while I was reading it like, ooh. This is trying a little extra hard to bond, you know? Again, that's not to say I didn't like it. I think that just happens sometimes because you do want to try hard. Like, are we gonna penalize people for trying really hard? But it's fine, like calm down, just be yourself. I really enjoyed you. This is the only book I can think of that's made me feel like that in a really long time. I'm sorry. Then we have category number nine. The perfect first date. Our first date's ever perfect. This is ridiculous. But if I had to pick one, that was the pro But if I had to pick a book that did everything right for me, I'm gonna go with Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. This is everything I ever, ever, this is so amazing. It was everything. I loved it so much. It has romance and thrills and twists and turns and amazing characters and amazing plot and an amazing villain. It was just a perfect date, okay? It was a million perfect hours that I spent taking notes and reading this. And look, it matches my socks. I've got a date with the sequel in December and I am so pumped. And finally, to wrap up this first date extravaganza, we have the last category, which is a humiliating first date. Which is a book you are embarrassed to admit you like and or embarrassed to be seen with in public for some reason. Now, I've long since given up being embarrassed about the books I like. I shout it loud and proud that I love Twilight. Okay, even now when they say something offhanded about Twilight, like out of the blue, I perk up and sarcastically defend it. Even though I'm actually defending it. Like I defend it with like sarcasm in my voice just so like they know it's okay. I'm not really mad. But I will defend it because I love it. I might be embarrassed to be seen in public with this edition of Breaking Dawn that I've clearly taped back together because I read it so many times that I broke the entire outside thing to pieces. But like, I'm not embarrassed to be reading Breaking Dawn. And oh my God, I forgot. Every time I open this Breaking Dawn book, it's like an amazing surprise that Stephanie Meyer has said to Christine and wrote Stephanie Meyer and then this is from when I got to interview Stephanie Meyer and it was just like such a life moment for me. Those are all my blind date books, blind dates. I had some other ones here that I haven't talked about. This is so controversial. Don't hate me, I really liked this book. This is my pride and joy. Dear Martin, speed date, blind date. 
blind date, you know, sometimes blind dates go really, really well. Just trust me when I tell you to go on a blind date with a book. I feel like I do this a lot and everyone's like, well, I need to know the synopsis. And I'm like, just shut up. Just put on a blindfold and date them. Sophie Kinsella, I've got your number. While I'm writing, I can't read Sophie Kinsella books and I'm still writing. My first draft, I feel like I overwrote a shitload and then reading Sophie Kinsella, I feel like she overwrites a shitload and like it wasn't helping my mindset with cutting stuff. It was harming it. It was making me think like, how come she's allowed to overwrite and I can't? But in my head, I was also thinking, well, I think if she cut some of this overwriting, it would have been better. But also I like it. Lord of Shadows. I mean like, have you had a better date than Lord of Shadows? Has a date made you go through all of the emotions in the way that Lord of Shadows has? I mean, yes, there's definitely, there's lots of fish in the sea. So there are, and I don't want you to take my fish. So don't take this too seriously. This is my perfect date and you can't have it. You can read it though. I'll let you read it, but just like you can't have it as your perfect date. Emma is my perfect date. Let me have her. Percy Jackson with out Percy just doesn't fly for me and I know they fly on a dragon in this book but it didn't fly for me it was like they were still on the ground yeah, there's no awkward or first date when you expect to be going on a date with Percy and then you walk in and it's fucking Jason I don't care how you try to sell me on him it's a no like I still don't see what you see this guy's a income poop he is dumb but pretty that is Jason Jason is that Fine, it's nice to have someone to take a brick to the face for you. It is. Like, whenever something's falling, Jason is bound to be in the way of it, so you don't have to be. But that's, it doesn't matter. It's still awkward, because I'm here I am waiting for Percy for, what, all of 450 pages? They barely even talk about him until the end, and they're like, oh, well, Percy's missing. And I'm like, oh, well, took you long enough to figure that out. Ow. Ow. If Jason were here, he could have been there for me for this. He could have been there to take that blow. Oh, I have the sun is also a star here. I was gonna talk about how this is also a perfect date for me. A fault in our stars. I was gonna talk about this and how this was better than I expected it to be. It was really, really beautiful and really made me happy even though I was also sad. A Court of Wings and Ruin. I'm sorry I threw you under the bus today. I really, really am because I got a lot of joy reading you. This is controversial. I am just sorry. I'm just like so controversial today with my two controversial picks. And The Martian. I have nothing bad to say about The Martian. Oh, except for I don't like the cover of this edition that I have. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the first date book tag. I went on so many first dates. I think I've gone on a decent amount of shitty first dates for someone who's as introverted as myself. Like, I'm proud. I mean, I guess I am 27, so I've had some time. Probably the average 27 year old's been on like triple the amount I have. But I am proud because I, it's hard for me. Thank you for watching. I love to hear your thoughts, disagree, do agree on any of my first date opinions. My name is Christine. I make videos every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.